Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on comparing the normality of a dependent variable to the normality of the residuals. So oftentimes in counseling research, when we're looking at research designs and data, we contemplate performing statistics like an independent samples t-test or an ANOVA that assume a normally distributed dependent variable for every level of the independent variable. So using these fictitious data in the data editor, as an example, I have a program variable that has two levels. It's an independent variable with two levels, individual and group, and a dependent variable I've named scores. It's measured the continuous level. So we would test these groups for normality. So it would be all the scores here, the first 25 scores, the individual level, and then all these scores here in the next 25 of the group level. So both of these groups of scores we would want to test to see if they are normally distributed. However, sometimes we see this assumption worded as the residuals of these groups need to be normally distributed. So that would be each score minus the mean for this group. That would be the residual and we would test the normality of the residuals. So I'm going to perform both methods to show you how they compare. So first let's just look at the normality of the dependent variable divided by levels of the independent variable. So again the normality from records 1 to 25 and then 26 through 50. There are several factors we consider when evaluating normality. For this example I'm just going to be looking at the skewness, the kurtosis, and the results from the Shapiro-Wilk test. I'm going to go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and then Explore. The Factor List list box will be populated with the Program variable. The Dependent List list box would be the Scores variable. Under Statistics, I'm going to add Outliers. Click Continue. Under Plots, I'm going to uncheck Stem and Leaf, check off Histogram, and check off Normality Plots with Tests. Click Continue and no changes under Options. Click OK. So again here for this demonstration I'm just going to be looking at the skewness, kurtosis, and the results from the Shapiro-Wilk. And there's a few guidelines for skewness and kurtosis as far as normally distributed variables uh, and determining that. One would be an absolute value of the skewness of less than 0.8 and an absolute value of the kurtosis of less than 3. And we can see that the skewness and kurtosis were the individual level of the independent variable. Uh, they appear okay, 0.123 and negative 1.478. And then for group, they appear okay as well, negative 0.096 and negative 1.377. Moving down to the results for the Shapiro-Wilk, which we find in the tests of normality table. For the individual level of the independent variable program, we have a statistically significant finding, 0 0.028. So in that case, we'd, we would reject the null hypothesis that these data were sampled from a normal distribution. And then for the group level of the independent variable program, we have a non-statistically significant finding, 0 0.08. So 0 0.028 is less than 0 0.05, so we would reject the null hypothesis in that instance. And here we have 0 0.08, that's greater than 0 0.05, so we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. And so we would assume that the data in the dependent variable associated with the group level of the independent variable are normally distributed. So keeping these values in mind and the values of skewness and kurtosis from above, I'm going to test the normality using the residuals method. So I'm going to go back to the data editor, although this can be run right from the output view as well. And I'm going to use the ANOVA dialog to create a new variable, which would be the residuals. So it would be Analyze, General Linear Model, and Univariate. Fixed Factor would be Program, and Dependent Variable would be Scores. And again, I'm only using this dialog to produce the residuals. So I'm going to go to Save, and here under Univariate Save, and under Residuals, I'm going to check Unstandardized. I want a new variable created, 
and I want that variable to contain the unstandardized residuals of the dependent variable scores. So I'm going to click continue and then OK. The results of the ANOVA itself are not of interest. I'm looking at just the residuals variable and you can see that a new variable is created here and it represents the differences between each score and the mean for each group, individual and the group level of the independent variable program. So it's the score minus the mean and we can see the result of that is negative 6.8 for this first value of 39. So we know the mean for this group is 45.8. 39 minus 45.8 is negative 6.8. Similarly 45 here in the second record minus 45.8 is negative 0.8. So I'm going to evaluate the normality of this residuals variable using the same method I used before. Go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and Explore. This dialog is still populated from when I tested the normality for the dependent variable scores. I'm just going to move the scores variable out of the dependent list list box and move the residuals variable in. I'm not going to make any other changes. So it's still going to be outliers and histogram and normality plots with tests. Click OK. Moving down to the descriptors table and looking for the skewness and kurtosis for individual and group, we can see the values are identical to what we had when we evaluated the dependent variable. 0.123 for skewness, negative 1.478 for kurtosis, and negative 0.096 for skewness for the group level, and negative 1.377 for kurtosis. And if we look at the test or normality, we can see we have the same probability value on the Shapiro-Wilk for individual and group. So as you can see, both methods gave the same result, whether we looked at the scores dependent variable and tested each level of that, or we produced the residuals and tested each level of the residuals. We ended up with the same result in terms of normality. We found that the individual scores were not normally distributed and the group scores were normally distributed as both methods produced the exact same skewness, kurtosis, and result for the Shapiro-Wilk. I hope you found this video on testing the dependent variable for normality and testing the residuals for normality to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.